Cristiano Ronaldo shook his head in disappointment during the moment of respect in last week's El Clasico. Obviously paying homage to Johan Cruyff, the legend that played for the Catalan team. And during the moment of respect, um, there was some that liked to um, applaud during the, the moment of silence or some that just want to pay their respect a certain way. But what, sh what was heard was some obscenities were shouted and suspected to be directed towards Cristiano Ronaldo. Now he went away shaking his head, um, uh, upset basically about the, the fact that people were ruining one of the, the a tribute to probably arguably the greatest European player to have ever played the game. But to talk about that is that La Liga has came out and said that they do not obviously uh, stand by this and they want to mm -hmm. condemn those fans who, have, who are ruining uh, such a special moment. I mean, did you see the tribute as a whole? It was beautiful. The whole stadium uh, it really was lit was. up. Uh, I know you were uh, away on a, a business trip, which sounds very fancy. Uh, when uh, the news broke that Johan Cruyff uh, yes. passed away. And a lot of people sent in tweets and stuff like that, and we saw the comment section. Uh, I did not feel comfortable doing a tribute to it, only because uh, I was just catching up on highlights from this legendary man's career. But uh, obviously, as Francis put it, too, I mean, you, I, I get to watch back the highlights. A lot of you guys got to watch it in real life, and I'm sure. Fun. Well, I had to watch highlights as well. It was like, I mean, I remember watching them, um, but it's my, like, my dad made it a case to tell me about Cruyff, the way that a lot of people, similar to Maradona's and Pele's, watch the videos, see how he played. But anyway, um, let's get to the quote, basically, that came out and discussed what has... What, this is not, by the way, just a, a specific case during the Johan Cruyff moment of silence. This has happened Annoying. to and specifically directed at Ronaldo for months. So the quote from Francisco Ramirez, um, and this is... He is the stop L-G-B-T-F-O-B-I-A. Phobia. I was waiting for you to pick that up. Okay. <laughs> Director. All right. Um, so uh, this is a quote that he had to say on the matter. For months, Ronaldo is a continuous object of insults and uh, malintentioned rumours in the tabloid and sensationalist press, but also from sports reporters, players and fans of rival teams with the goal of humiliating, offending and uh, denigrating a great player. Next he quote. said, next quote. It is evident that the use of sexual orientation as a weapon has the objective of insulting and degrading. In the past, this has happened with other players who are harassed and insulted in the same way, like former Barcelona player and coach Guardiola, ex Real Madrid midfielders Guti and Mikel. So, uh, all right, to put this into context, um, I'm not stupid. I have been around the footballing game for many years, and I understand that terms that are um, directed towards players are often just almost like mind-numbing insults you don't really think about when you're saying them, like just to shout um, gay profanities at specific players. I don't actually think that a lot of them know what they're directing that towards and what it means. Most of the time, they're just using it as an insult. They're just It just comes right. out so freely, whereas Cristiano Ronaldo, there's a little bit more substance to why they're directing it to him because many tabloid rumours and with how he carries himself personally, many people associate him and have spread rumours that he is, in fact, gay. None holds to any truth. It's just ridiculous. He'll say they're, and they're deliberately trying to direct it towards him. But we are at a day and age uh, and we are progressing forward as a society. And I think it is right to condemn the use of that profanity towards players. Um, because, as you mentioned, it happened in basketball um, where Rajon Rondo directed it towards the referee. And it happened that the referee was actually gay. So when... You might not think that it holds any substance, but then when it's directed towards someone who is involved in that community, of course it's going to hold more weight and it's going to be more offensive. And I understand you're not going to change everyone's mindset. People are going to stick to the same range of insults that they're always going to use. use. But especially in that moment of a moment, in a moment of silence, like I just don't think there's any room for it. And I understand there may be scrutiny out there of people saying, oh, you can't change what's already been there. But we are changing as a society. That's my thoughts yeah. on it. Part of this is that uh, fans are going to be fans. Mm -hmm. uh, and is there really a way to stop fans from screaming things at players, at refs? I mean, players can be stopped from screaming things at refs. There's suspensions, there's fines that can be handed out. But fans in themselves are going to scream racial profanities at ref. They're going to scream anti-gay slurs at ref, uh, refs and players. Uh, and sometimes there's a whole crowd. There's the bullshit chant when there's a bad call. Mm -hmm. uh, these things are always, I think, going to happen. Does it make it right? No. Uh, did I take part in it? Absolutely. I used to yell at Reggie Miller that he looked like an effing alien yeah. uh, when I used to go to Knicks games. Could he hear me? No, I was on the top and I had a little eight-year-old's voice. You're Probably shouldn't have been in swearing. In the nosebleeds? I was in the nosebleeds. Probably shouldn't have been swearing mm -hmm. at eight years old. I don't uh, condemn that either. 
But uh, what there is a line that should be drawn at least somewhere. During a moment of silence for a legendary player, whether you like the guy or not, don't take advantage of those moments to use racial profanities or anti-gay slurs. Uh, you can scream it with everybody else during the middle of the game. I think a lot of the times the players, uh, even if they hear it, uh, most of the time they don't or they have to learn to walk it off anyway. But there's mm -hmm. a part of having a thick skin when playing any professional Absolutely. sport. Absolutely. And if you're Cristiano Ronaldo, like uh, one of the guys, one of the quotes that Ramirez had was in relation to you know, being sensationalized in the press. Well, that comes with being one of the greatest footballers that have ever lived and also having a social media following uh, that I can't count on any fingers or toes or people in the country. Yeah, <laughs> and, and you're absolutely right. It's like you, it is, it's just not Bad worth us. Timing. It's not worth us talking about, honestly, to, to talk about how ways that we can try and change this from happening yes, because we've been trying to change the racial profanities that have plagued the game for how long? And you look at teams like Dinamo Kiev and... Uh, other teams where they consistently still do it and there is bans that you can put in place but as you mentioned there's no way to monitor how every single person is going to react in the profanities that are going to be shouted out it is just it's unfortunate and it's saddening that we are moving that as a, uh, the community and everything moves forward and we're more accepting of the lgbt community those words as much as people who direct them towards anyone probably don't mean that that person is gay. They're just directing well, it as an uh, insult. There's an there's a amazing Louis C.K. stand-up skit uh, where he talks about uh, that in his time, in his language, uh, being a faggot didn't mean you were being gay. Exactly. It's, that's it, exactly it has a true. different meaning. But, of course, in uh, today's, I would think, a little bit overly PC society, mm -hmm. uh, you can't say anything without the press coming down on you or at least somebody on social media. And, again... Just because it's wrong doesn't mean there's actually something we could really do about it. Therefore, you have to pick and choose your battles in this situation. And this what one are you going to accomplish? Yeah, this one is where you pick the battle where it's clear that they, people potentially use the, the silence mm -hmm. of the crowd to try and get that message across. Yes. That's where you can pick apart the persons or the, uh, those responsible and be like, that's just not... It's not acceptable, but it's definitely not acceptable here because this is a, a moment of silence. Put in place. Wait till Ronaldo's banging in goals left and right. And then you scream terrible things at him. Yeah. I had to wait for Reggie Miller to hit threes left and right, and then I got to scream things at him. <laughs> All right, well, we want to know what you guys think in the comment section below. Um, let us know what you think on the issues we brought up. Um, and come back to TYT Sports. Twitter is at TYT Sports. Francis underscore Maxwell and Francis Maxwell host. Host. On Instagram. Go over there and check out some of the outfits of the day. How many is there, Jason? I got one. It's nice. a Snapchat. It's cool. <laughs> and Jason Rubin, 91 on both. I really need to make, match up my accounts. It's saddening. Come back. When's Host. Your, Host. When's your birth year? 1989. Francis Maxwell, 89. I don't want to show that I'm old. No. Here, glasses. Uh, you got it on the right side. They're uh, 